Lab 1 will get us started with the software and hardware needed for the rest of the labs in the workshop. We'll get some practice by loading a sample C program to the experimenters board and blinking the LED. If you're following along in your workbook, steps 1 through 8 show you how to download and install all the tools and software that you're going to need to work on this lab. Let's go ahead and start with step 9. Following along in your workbook at step 9, the first step is to connect the USB uh, cable to your PC. So I'm connecting that here. And I'm going to plug it in to the USB JTAG interface here. This is a uh, Texas Instruments FET instrument. So I'm plugging that in. You should hear Windows recognize that. We're also going to be using this uh, MSP430 F5XX experimenter board here. Um, this board has several features. Uh, one of the things you need to check first is to make sure that the battery is on the back. Following along at step 11, make sure that you have all of the jumpers in the correct locations on the board. This switch right here is currently in the FET position, furthest to the outside. We'll be using it later as battery powered, which is furthest to the inside, like this. Step 10 has us plug the board in to the JTAG. In step 12, on your PC desktop, you should have a shortcut that looks like Code Composer Studio's uh, symbol. Uh, I'm going to double click on that. We'll see Code Composer open up in just a moment. And after a few moments, the workspace launcher uh, window will appear. Make sure that you have C colon backslash 5XX under ODW backslash workspace in there, just as you see on the screen, and click OK. This is going to create a workspace folder in that location. Uh, all of our lab projects today will be uh, added to that location as we work on them. You'll see a splash screen start up as uh, Code Composer begins. If you see that you're prompted to review and install any updates at this time, uh, just go ahead and say no. Uh, when the license dialog comes up, this is step 13, select the Evaluate Code Composer for 30 days and click OK. Uh, after you've done that, you'll see the welcome screen appear, as you see on the screen right now. There appeared the uh, new updates available. I'm going to say no. Uh, when the welcome screen comes up, just reach up here and click on the symbol for Code Composer to start Code Composer. Step 14 is going to show us how to create a new project. So to make things simpler, I'll maximize the Code Composer screen. And then on the menu bar, I'm going to go to File, New, CCS Project. After a moment, the new CCS project dialog will appear, and I'm going to name the, uh, the lab lab under 1, and click Next. Uh, this location, of course, was already in that uh, workspace folder that we used from before. Since we're working with the MSP430, we want the project type to be MSP430, uh, in the, uh, and then we'll click Next. In the additional project settings, there's no changes that we need to make, so we'll click Next. And then in the project settings window, we want to change the device variant here. We want to go down to MSP430 F5XXX, so that will filter out all the ones we don't need. And we should be able to look down here and find the MSP430 F5438A device. Don't make any other changes. Go ahead and click Finish. So that takes us to step 15. Uh, Code Composer is a highly customizable tool. Uh, your first view is kind of intimidating. Uh, this is what it looks like, pretty much a blank screen. On the right hand side, you may see the Cheat Sheets pane open. Uh, you can go ahead and close it by clicking the X on the tab. The furthest left hand pane is the project pane. All of your components, all your libraries, source files, settings, all of that uh, that comprise a project are displayed in that window. The middle pane is where you do your editing and the rest of the stuff. That's the workspace pane. When you're editing, the Eclipse editor will be seen there, along with the tabs to all the files that you're, you have open. On the far right, that's the outline pane. Uh, that displays the C and C++ file type elements like structures and so on. Uh, right now, go ahead and reach over and click on the plus to the left of Lab 1. 
to expand the project out and that will show you what's inside there. What we're going to do now is create and add a source file. So I'm on step 16. Uh, go ahead and right click anywhere in the blank portion of the project pane. I'll right click in there and I'm going to go uh, select new source file. So I'll go to new source file here. I'm going to name the file blink under LED dot C and click finish. It should open that up for editing for us and there it is nice and blank there. So when that appears uh, what we're going to do is you can you can type this in if you like the code that you see below or I've already added this into one of the files that you've installed on your computer. We can go to file, open file, find our way to that uh, that file in the 5xx files. There it is, the C, 5xx ODW, lab1, and we should see blink led.txt. If we click on that, that will open it up in another editor window. I can click in that window, control A, control C. I'll click on the tab for blink led.c, control V to paste it in. So now I've cut and pasted the, uh, the code into that. If you take a look at this, it's basically setting up the watchdog timer, enabling the, uh, the output, uh, telling it where the clocking is coming from on the device, enabling the watchdog timer interrupt, enabling global interrupts, and basically just blinking the light on and off. That's really all we want to do. So now on the menu bar, go ahead over here and click on the Save button to save the project. So now at step 17, we're going to go ahead and download and run the program. I'm going to click on the Debug button right here. Clicking that button compiles the source file in your project and downloads uh, the executable to the flash memory. So there we go. We're now in the debug session. We can see the program that's running here in the, in the lower part of the screen. We can see all our project elements over here. So you should have a screen. We're now at step 18 that looks something like this. If during the download process, if you got a uh, notification that the firmware on the FET, uh, the tool needed to be updated, just go ahead and click update. If you look up in the top portion of the, of the board of the uh, screen here, this is the run button. This is the terminate button. So what we're going to do is go ahead here and click this button to run the code. So you can see that the program is running. So if you take a look at the bottom of the board, you can see that the LED is blinking right there. So back in the workbook, we're taking a look at step 19. We can go ahead and click terminate all to halt the program. That terminates the debugger session and it should return us back to the editor view. You'll also notice that sometimes the cheat sheet window appears over here on the right hand side. Uh, if it's nothing that you need to know, you can go ahead and close that. Since we're going to be going on to lab two later, you can right click on lab one right here. I'm right clicking on that and going down to close project. 